Photographers are like expired cans of spam. While they might save your life in an emergency, they probably won't. When people stand in front of them, they say, oh, why? They smell like pork. It doesn't mean if five of them came to me for help, I would turn them away. You're the monster, not me. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So today we answer five desperate photographers. Not one of them asked about my Canon R8 with the 85 mil Tony 1.2 that we're on right now with the super sure, always sure of something. Was that your question? Where does the Fuji X-T5 fit in your expectations from manufacturers? It can do both video and stills. You get the Fuji color, decent dynamic range. The X-T5 is confused. It's as if you're in primary school and you're being asked, which gender do you want to be? And the kid's like, I don't know. Can we choose? We can choose it now? I'm only four years old. Do I have the information needed for this decision? Wow, that's fun. It's strange because the X-T3 was like a photography hybrid video. It could do video, but mostly people liked it for the photography. It had a flip up screen, dials. Then the X-T4 came along and tried to be a YouTuber's version of that. Most purist photographers didn't like that because you have your dials for photos, but then a fully articulating screen. And they, most photographers don't like that. For some reason, you're lazy. Oh, I have to move it. Ow. So like, they went YouTuber and then they went back to remove the flippy screen. So like, what are you doing? Some people bought the X-T4 thinking, okay, we're a YouTuber's camera now. And then the X-T5 comes out, the upgrade, and it's worse for you. I, I go back and forth whether I want to insult a camera for the things it lacks or praise it for being plenty good enough for all of us. The X-T5 fits both descriptions. It's amazing, 40 megapixels. It's worse than the X-H2 in a lot of ways. Like the autofocus, it's not the same camera for some reason. It's not just a different body. The Nikon Z30, ZFC, and Z50 are all the same performance. Just different body shape. Not this. Same sensor, but something's different. Very different. So Fuji, I don't know, you could get by. But it's not something that's on my radar. 40 megapixels, super over sharpened overkill. It can do 8K video and like 4K hydro quality super sampled. That's not what I'm going for. I'm going for higher frame rates and that thing lacks hard in that area. So it's like way overkill for photography. It's good for that. And it does shoot nice video, but you wouldn't choose it for video. So it's an afterthought in my life, and I leave you now. I once again forgot my hair light. I should be sued by the industry. I could have been so separated from the background. These aren't how hair lights work. It highlights half my face. I don't know why, but when I saw a review from Terry, looks like DJI Pocket 3 is better than the ZV-E1. Should I sell my ZV-E1? I don't know, should you? Are you that dumb? to like base that entire decision on one review or what? Look, here's the reality. DJI Pocket 3, it looks fantastic and fun. Much lighter, more stable than the ZV-E1, but so less versatile. I would never sell my A7S 3 for that. Like, okay, I'm done with that. Like, I don't know, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. I've made many videos about it, but just, I don't love the whole gimbal mechanism. I don't love that there's only one battery that stays in there forever. and You can't change it out. So it dies one day, what are you gonna do? And fricking no background blur control. You're always blurry. I don't like that. I like stopping my lenses down. I went out the other day with this 85 mil 1.2 and I chose Tony 8, eight Tonys, because I wanted the background in. I didn't buy this to be this stupid, what I'm doing now, wide open at 1.2. I bought it because there's 3D pop, and I couldn't believe what I was witnessing. At Tony 8, just the separation and the love. So like, you're not getting that on a DJI Pocket 3, whereas you could get Zeiss lenses for your ZV-E1. So ZV-E1 sounds fantastic. 
I almost want one, but the Canon R8 is better in every way, except for 4K 120p being missing and 240p not being there. But I have Canon Color Science and Stabilization that's probably better than your stupid Ibis. So my clickbaity video DJI Pocket 3 destroys every camera. Oh my god. Is it true? Like, no. But it kind of could. You could replace a lot of things with that thing. And it looks fun. But do I have one? No. Do I have a Freewell filter pack for it? Even though I don't have the camera? Yeah, I do. For some reason. I'm hoping to review it one day. We'll see. I'm not ready to pounce. Not ready yet. They, these look fantastic though. There's a mist in there. I bet you a less strong one than the official DJI one. All these NDs, circular polarizers. Wow. Let's all pick one up. Review confirmed. I need your help, brother. I currently have X-T4, X-T5, Fuji 150-600. Not enjoying the results at soccer games. Who could enjoy themselves at any soccer game? That's your problem, not the lens. What would you choose for this? I can get close to pitch. The hell does that mean? What does that even mean? I've been analyzing this for the past three hours. Close to pitch. Does that mean you can get close to the pitcher? In the baseball game that you're not at? Because you're at a stupid, dumber soccer game? I can get close to pitching. What does it mean? Oh, man. I also do occasional wildlife. Let's just pretend that's all you do. Fuji will give you not great results. I don't know, man. Like, the 100 to 400 was the better lens, but it has its own problems. Fuji's not really your system for like relying on getting the shot of your kid that you're forcing to play soccer even though he doesn't want to. It's like, oh, score a goal, Timmy, just like your old man. He doesn't care about your former life in your amateur college soccer league. So like, what are you doing? I don't know your answer. You could get by with that. What are you not happy with? Is it not sharp enough? Is the autofocus not getting you? The kid? that you're torturing? I don't know, then go Sony. If you want better autofocus, the answer is always Sony or Canon or Nikon or Panasonic now. They don't have the lenses. If it was me, I'm leaning Panasonic G9 too with something. 100 to 400, then you can get close to pitch. You asshole. So I don't know, well, leave me alone. If you want wildlife, that could be an okay setup. It's just Fuji autofocus is not reliable. They cannot detect an actual animal and stay on it for video in slow motion. Whereas Panasonic comes out like first try and it's like animal eye detect. We're perfect. Woohoo. It's like, I don't know what Fuji's doing. Their engineers have no like actual glasses. They don't even wear glasses. Fuji, you suck. Panasonic is better. Canon anything would probably be better. Eye animal detect. Freaking Sony for sure. Just look elsewhere, man. Sell your stupid Fuji leather pants and move on. Hello, thanks for the test. I have a question whether in your opinion, if you have the Mark III, is it worth switching to the OM-1? Or whether the differences are marginal? Olympus EM-1 Mark III versus OM-1. I can only say I did try them. I wasn't noticing a whole heck of a lot of reasons to switch because it was actually worse in quite a bit of ways. The autofocus was less reliable. Have they firmware updated the thing? Maybe it's okay now? I highly doubt it. It's OM system now. OM sushi. What's that flashing thing? Is that an overheat warning flashing? Wow, I've never seen that. Thanks for warning me. It's at one bar. It'll never happen. The battery will die before it. Kennedy, piece of shit. That just makes me nervous. Why is that on? Side rant. Why can't I control that and have it never come on? I don't care about you. There's many things on that screen right now that I would choose to take out, like the headphone volume. Why is that wasting real estate? I want to punch the air. So like, the thing is with the OM-1, you now get 4K 60 10-bit slow-mo for wildlife like that did look much better than the shaky ass 24p footage you're gonna get so it's like yeah if you're doing that it did look nice 
but then HD 240 is no longer 10-bit and over sharpened and you can't control it unless you hop out of log, which you lose your dynamic range. Have fun with that in the sunshine, you freak. We need the sun. Olympus won't let you see it. So Mark III was like fantastic. For vlogging especially, it hardly ever hunted. And then I get the OM-1 that's hunting in here just for a video like this. Maybe Canon's hunting now because I had to turn off subject detect only because it just will not recognize you to start a video. Once it has you, it's pretty good unless you turn your head. I heard something, an autofocus motor. So I don't know, I'm hoping the OM-2 does something and just the dumbest name. You already have a film camera named the OM-1. And now you have your new modern ones. And whenever someone's searching for OM-1, you have to weed through both. It's the dumbest thing ever. You look for a deal. Oh, my, oh what are all these? Film cameras. Who cares about... They're so dumb. Man, they should eat their own sushi. There's DHA in there. Could help your brain. But I gotta be honest with you. I miss that 75 to 300 tiny lens. That thing was so light. That little combo. You barely felt it was on. And then you, you're wild life and that could be fun times, but no. All right, last question here. What do you think about using a teleprompter with a good camera for video calls so you can look people in the eyes and actually appear to be doing so? Thank you. In my opinion, teleprompters make robots. People who read from them, however distinct they are, disappoint humanity. Your soul is forgotten by God when you use a teleprompter. Every time I click on a video, it just irritates me to see I know immediately if you're reading a script or not because you suck at writing the script. You actually sat down and wrote these lines and they're so basic and obvious. The OM-1 now shoots 4K 60p, 10-bit 422. It allows for animal eye detect in video. Like it's so basic, the sentences, where's the heart? I want to hear people's opinions about these modes in the field. Speaking from the heart, every time a speech has been given, the best ones are from the heart, not read. Who could memorize a script, a speech, and you're reading it and you're just like, I'm a robot and everyone's just like, Thanks for the information. It's not what I wanted. I wanted a little inspiration. So like teleprompters are the dumbest thing. I hate them so much. Sometimes you want that type of succinct information. It's like, just tell me what it is. And then a guy's reading it like a robot. I'm watching your eyes twitch from side to side because you're reading. I'm not reading, I promise. And then you're faking like these motions in the hand as if you're not reading like and then they record it to an ssd drive like i can see your mind i just realized that i'm way underexposed because i'm going based off the metering but if i cover that light it's zero when it should be plus one i should have brightened the light this is closer to what it should have been at the beginning but i suck because I forgot to write that in my teleprompter. To say, turn the light on. So stop being a robot boy. Read from your heart. And maybe I'll watch your show. And not throw up in my mouth. Thank you for watching today. And buying a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt. Do you agree on stuff? Are you buying the stuff that I suggested? You're not. Subscribe for more videos. I'll see you next 21.2. Never die, Tony.